Hi, this is PDF Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 106. So in this tutorial, we're going to just pretty much only work in Unity. And I'm going to take a, a rigged model with animations. And I'm going to uh, get it set up to work with our game. So I'm just going to delete the Dungeon Guardian we had before. I'm going to activate Bluezilla and let's shrink some of this stuff down. I'm actually going to reconnect it to its prefab. So it's blue. It has absolutely nothing on it. So we'll go into my scripts. Well, not my scenes, my scripts. And I drop the AI on it. It's telling me it's going to lose the prefab. That's fine. And sure enough, it adds everything there for us. Now, let's go ahead and set them up. I'm going to have to first, well, let's work with the sphere clatter. Let's also add the uh, trigger in there. So we'll open up Mono Develop. And it's going to be under the AI since it adds it. And I'm going to do it in the awake. So void awake. Uh, we're going to need a reference to it. Well, we know it, it should automatically be added. Uh, but we'll do a quick check. If get component. The component we want, which is a sphere collider. And we'll just test to see, well, actually, before we do an if, let's actually get a reference to it. So we're just going to say, a type sphere, uh, my auto sense. If I could spell it, it works really good. And I'm just going to call it SC is equal to get component sphere collider. Then we'll check to see if it exists. If SC equals null, throw to debug log error. And we'll just say there is no sphere collider on this mob. And I'll just throw an else statement in. And if there is, then I'm going to want to say sc dot, and I believe it's just called trigger is trigger equals true. So I'll go back into Unity. And if you notice, I don't have my sphere trigger or my is trigger toggled on my sphere. But when I start it up, it should toggle for me. And there we go. So now we know that it's always going to be uh, a trigger. So with that done, I'm going to move down to my character controller, uh, just like we did before. I'll zoom in. I'm going to want to center it. So about there, right about there. We'll increase the radius. Uh, go to one of the side views. I'm going to want to move it up. I do remember, I believe it was 4.2, which would make this 2.1. And I'm going to want to move it forward a bit. So that's pretty good. So we got the character controller set up on it. Uh, the problem was we don't have a jump animation. And it looks like there's, uh, I was getting another error here. Let me just quickly clear the console and hit run again. I might not be able to do that. Okay, the sphere collider one's working. Okay, so we need a jump animation. I'm on Bluezilla. I'm going to go to my animation, uh, window and if you don't know you can just go up to window 
hit animation, it's going to make a little window pop up here for you. I just take mine. You'll get something like this here. I've always just taken mine and just docked it wherever. Uh, for me personally, uh, where did I just put it? <laughs> I don't see where I got to. So I'm going to open it up again. And I'm just going to take it and dock it down here somewhere. For some reason it won't dock now. Uh, okay. Well, I'm not sure why it's not docking. There we go, finally. But anyway, select your game object that has animations. Uh, we'll take it, just hit create new clip, and it's going to ask you where you want to put it. I'm going to go into my prefabs under mobs. Uh, it doesn't matter where you put it, just remember where you put it. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call them you know, Bluezilla and I'm going to put it in there and it's the jump animation I need jump lowercase and if I were to go into my prefabs uh, under mobs I now have a blue oh, I'll have to refresh it so we hit refresh the folder shows up I'm actually going to drag my prefab in there as well so I have my prefab and my jump. Now I might be able to edit this directly. Uh, apparently not. I'd have to go down here. Well, I'm just going to take Bluezilla over here. Go up to his animations. And as you notice, it automatically adds it for you. So I want to reassign them to the prefab. So now when I look at the prefab, it should have them as well. And I'm going to go back to the console. Hit clear, even though I have clear on play set. Start it up. And it still says there's no sphere collider. So I might not be able to do that in a way. I'm going to move it to uh, the start function and see if that works. And all the mobs come running to me. But we we'll also have this other null reference. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I don't have a run animation. So we'll take care of that too. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to move this at the very start of my start and see if that fixes it. I don't see any typos. But let's make a run. So same thing. We select our guy, go to the animation editor. Now, since we're actually using run currently, uh, you'll probably want to copy one. Now, if you actually want to sit around, and there's a few tutorials I've seen online where it shows you how to uh, create animations, and we might do one a little later on, but uh, not in this series. But anyway, back to run. We want to have a run, an run animation. I'm going to start off by actually using its walk animation. So I'll select it. Select its walk. It shows me where it is. I'm just going to copy it. And then scroll down till I find it. I'm going to call it run. Small letters. And then I'm just going to want to drag that into his folder down in the prefabs. So it's going to take me a little while to scroll down there. Here we are. And if I come over and look up Bluezilla, he didn't automatically get the run, which is fine. We'll just add it. And you notice it shows it at the end here. I'll just take run and put it on. Now you'll notice that um, I copied the walk animation. So if you're to look at it over here and you wanted to show, if you wanted to start looking at all the uh, transformation lines, you might not be able to see too small on this screen. But if you go through, you can actually find all the animations and start editing them since it's a copy. But we're just trying to get the guy working. So let's start him back up. There we go. And as you can see, his animation needs a little bit of work as well. He's a little twitchy. But he is now working. Now another problem that I've also encountered with some of the mobs 
or some uh, 3D models is that it'll be rotated. As you notice, I've had it rotate 180 degrees. When I first got it, it was like this here. So when I started up, he's actually chasing me backwards. Not exactly what I want. Uh, and this is kind of trial and error. You'll have to go in and figure out exactly you know what needs to be rotated. It's usually, at least in my experience, always been the root uh, part of the, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the skeleton. Like here's your mesh. I'm not really sure what this is referred to. I believe it's the, uh, well, whatever it is, it's usually the drop down one. I'll just come in and rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis. Hit play. Bluezilla now chases me the right way. So I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to reassign him to his prefab. I'm going to close these up. And I'm still getting errors here. It's saying it's not finding the animation run. But we know we have it. And I'm not sure why it's erring sometimes. Try it again. And I'm still getting that error occasionally, but let's take a look at the sphere collider. And it is checking. Uh, let's go back in, take a look. Let's try it like that. That should be fine. Because we're getting a reference to the component. Then we check to see if the component exists. If it does not exist, uh, throw a little message saying that there's no collider. Else, set the trigger to true. Uh, let's see if that helps a bit. Uh, now I'm just getting errors. I'm going to have to make SC uh, global if I want to do it like that. Well, to be honest, I'm just going to leave it here and I'll look into it a little bit later on. I really don't want to make a global variable for the sphere collider. Uh, it might be the only option. But even though I am getting an error message for it, uh, let's try Even though I'm getting an error message for it, we know that it is working. Uh, ah, there we go. <laughs> now we're just getting a ton of errors. So there. There, 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 this end start, and it's not what we wanted. We do not want to end start. And there we go. A little bit of a lesson in debugging. So hopefully that helps you get some of your models that you have set up for use in our game. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.